All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. And uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about that Phil Spencer interview that he just did with Kind of Funny Games. The interview was about 40 minutes. Wish it was a little bit longer. Man, you got to love Phil Spencer interviews, right? Got to love them. Phil Spencer interviews will always set the timeline on fire. But in the last video that I made about Phil Spencer where I spoke about him doing interviews, I said Phil Spencer needs to shut up. And I'm even though I'm glad he speaks up from a content creator point of view, I think from a business point of view, that still stands that he needs to shut up. Because I, I just don't think that the, the takeaways from this interview were necessarily positive. And if Xbox fans are honest, this is not what they wanted to overall hear. Because a lot of people's takeaways from this interview was kind of like conceding, waving the white flag. They feel like Phil Spencer has like a loser mentality and he doesn't have like a competitive nature. That competitive nature that like the execs, um, the executive uh, executives of Xbox that they had during the 360, that does not exist now. That they are okay with just being kind of being in their own lane now and just existing in harmony and not really competing. He he said it very plainly. They and he, they've been saying this kind of for a while. They they really don't have any desire to outdo the competition. Speaking specifically of Nintendo and PlayStation, that's not what they they don't. That's not what they're trying to do. But I think that's actually a detriment to to Xbox and the Xbox fans because as a result, I think because you don't feel that that fire and desire to to necessarily compete with the other two. That results in in the products you get when you got a fire lit under your ass and you feel like you have to dominate, so to speak. Then I think your products will be a result of that. Um, but it's like this complacency and this. So just to get into a, a few topics um, in quotes that that he that he said, the ones that that's you know stood out to me. So you know he spoke about the creative freedom, and you know I I put up like this Xbox um this uh, Phil Spencer bingo card um of all the stuff that he was probably most likely going to mention in the interview. He damn near hit like ninety percent of the stuff uh that I that was on the bingo card. Very predictable because he touches on the same things over and over again in every damn interview. So he touched on like creative freedom, allowing the studios to have their creative freedom, letting rare. Uh, do Sea of Thieves, letting Obsid Obsidian do Grounded, letting, letting Tango do Hi-Fi Rush and not pigeonholing them into what they feel they should do and, and what they want them to do, which PlayStation does that too, right? He says, and, and one of his quotes was, we build games that review in the 80s and review in the 60s. It's just part of the games industry, but, uh, but when the review is low, it does surprise him. The the only issue I have with this this statement is th there's there's a there's a meeting between creativity and quality. And I think to kind of say that just because you're being creative that sometimes that may result in a a low score and to like kind of just be okay with that, I I don't like that. I personally don't like that. Yes. Sometimes being creative will absolutely lead to failure. Like that, I, that's one of the re I bring up dreams. Dreams is something very creative that nobody gives a damn about. But the mentality to kind of accept, like, yeah, we're gonna be creative, and sometimes that may result in us landing in the '60s. Eh, I don't know if I like that me mentality coming from from Phil Spencer, right? Um, I just think that like there you th like, and, and developers talk about this all the time. The, the the trying to find that balance between creativity, but something that sells millions and millions of copies sometimes that is hard. But that's that's the that's the bar that you have to set. That's the standard you have to set. You have to do that. So just kind of accepting that sometimes that's going to happen. No, 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 no. I, no, you, you I think you have to like truly aim and intend Develop with intention to be creative, but also have a very quality game that's going to be reviewed well. And not that it's all about reviews, but the mass consumer feels like this game is creative, but also quality and truly amazing. 
So that's what I'll say about that. Then he goes on to speak about mock interviews and, and speaking about Redfall specifically, right? So he said that based on mock interviews and internal metrics that Redfall, the final uh, uh, like Metacritic, the final review score of Redfall was double digits lower than what they thought it would be. So their internal metrics and mock reviews had Redfall somewhere up here. It was that, you know, it turned out to be down here. Fire all of them. Get them out of here. They're, they're trash. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what people look for in video games. You're inter whoever makes these internal metrics, whoever did these mock reviews should never touch a controller again in life. They are morons. They are, they are stupid. Listen, and I don't, you know, I usually don't call out names in, um, in my videos, but listen, I'm sorry. The people who got flew out to play Redfall, like these influencers, like Colt Eastwood, who, who, you know, and I, I was willing to, you know, throw Colt some bail before, right? Because, you know, they, they, they put them on the best rigs and everything like that. Um, you know, high end PCs. They didn't play on the Xbox. So when that was said, I would before the game was uh, actually came out, I was like, okay, that's understandable. Like they kind of, they kind of, you know, gave gave y'all the trick. You know, they they, they tricked y'all a little bit. You know, they, they you know they they pulled a fast one on y'all. But when the game released now and we've played it and we all have high end rigs, I'm like, no, no, there 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 is no high end rig that in in the world that you could have put Redfall in front of me and I would have been like, yeah, this is a good game and I'm excited for it. No, it doesn't exist. This, this could be a rig touched and blessed by Jesus. I would have been like, this game is garbage. I assure you, there is, I don't, I don't care what vertical slice, what part of the level you could have put, you could have put me in. I would have been like, no, no, there's, there's no way. Not, it's not possible. You, you, you were blinded. They, they caught you with the okie doke and it wasn't even a good okie doke, but you fell for it. Sorry, bro. You're not, you're not a good measure. You don't have a good measurement of quality in good games. I, no offense, but, but you, all the influers, Colt Eastwood and the rest of them, not a good measurement. They don't, they don't know how to analyze good quality games. You don't. Same thing with the mock reviewers of Redfall. You don't know what you're talking about. I would, and, and, and there are a few people who, who went up there and played the game and said, no, I don't think it's very good. There were like maybe two that I know of. They think it's average. Rest of them like, oh, it's great. And oh, I can't wait for it. Don't touch no controllers no more. Y'all are banned from controllers for the rest of the week. So yeah, the mock reviewers, idiots, morons, get rid of them, all of them. Um, he also went on to say that um, with Redfall, they kind of left Arcane Austin to handle the game on their own. And they he admitted that they need to engage earlier in the development process uh so they can stare teams properly and be more involved and he said that um you know he's saying that he doesn't really want to make promises anymore and he just wants uh the games to speak for themselves essentially and that's why he spoke about starfield but he d he's trying not to make any promises uh because he knows they don't really hold any weight but he's saying they they kind of did that with the Starfield process. They became very, and they became involved with it earlier in the review process, in the development process, than Redfall. So it's kind of like this, 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 this debate. Well, should they be more involved? Should they be less involved? Man, it, it's we we've talked about that a lot. It's they, they got to find their their right balance and the, and the right you know the science uh, to it. But I think their studios is at the point where you can't leave them all alone too much. Other companies have development studios where it seems like, yeah, we, we can leave y'all alone to y'all own devices and, and you know, we'll do our checkups and stuff like that and we may need to tell you something here and there. But, you know, um, they got to figure that, uh, that pipeline and that process up. Out. Um, he did mention, like, you know, he sees the the Twitter, the the the, the calling on Twitter, fire Phil. You know, he kind of takes that on the chin. He knows that comes, you know, everything. The buck stops with him, as they like to say, and um, he he understand he understands that. And he kind of made made a joke about him 
him being fired. Uh, I don't remember his exact statement, but some people are kind of like alluding that people. Uh, some people are saying that's him, like alluding to him possibly losing losing his uh, position. I don't think that's. Sorry, I think my mic just peaked a little bit right there because I moved it. Um, I don't think that's actually going to happen. Um, but some people are might be reading. Some people are reading into that. Uh, he did say now that some people you could you could det- decipher this and however you want. I do want to be fair about this. So he said more people are playing age two than Hi-Fi Rush. And I believe he's specifically talking about on X on the Xbox platform. And yeah, age two was, was remastered. And yes, age two has a multiplayer component and it has more more legs and replayability. But I still think that's somewhat weird that it's a remaster, but it's 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 it's, it's a game that came out in 1999. And I'm a big age fan. Love it. I played it as a kid, but it's a game that came out in 1999. It's not a remake. It's a remaster. So it's a game that came out in 1999 and like, okay, it it just came out in what, late January? And I don't know, like to say Age 2 is being played more than Hi-Fi Rush? That To me, that kind of points to maybe that stealth drop isn't the best isn't the best uh, decision. Um, you don't market and promote your games enough, yada, yada, yada. I just don't know about that one. I don't know if that's a positive thing. It's just, all that, that stuff is just very questionable. Because at the end of the day, like I said, it's a game that came out in 1999. Even though it's on the Xbox uh, for, the, for the first time, came out in 1999, bro. Um, so more so this is towards the end of the uh, end of the inter- interview. More more uh, quotes from him. Um, he says, "So he said, I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true. That if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you are going to see console share shift in a dramatic way." Now, full context, he's talking about the console the console market share, and he's saying that be- because. Uh, because um, last generation was the generation where people really started to build their digital library. So the dig- he's, he's saying the digital library is really what are keeping people in the ecosystem that they currently are. And it's hard to pull people away, regardless of like how many like amazing games you drop. I just disagree with that. Some people, there, there is some validity Two, it's hard to bring people out of their ecosystem that they've that they're very comfortable with. No doubt about that. Not denying that. But it's 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 not about uh, getting people to abandon where they are or getting people to sell you know the the console they have because they have a a digital library. It's not about that. X people are not buying Xboxes. It's like the 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 numbers are down. The hardware sales are 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 down. It, it's literally coasting at the same um, at the same rate where the with with the Xbox One. It, they said it sold like five hundred thousand more at this point, or maybe five hundred to like a million more than the Xbox One. That's not that's not great. That's not great. Like especially since the gaming market has has grown like exponentially. I I just yeah I just I just don't think that's true. I think like. What did he say? He said, there's no world that Starfield is a, like, there's no world that if Starfield gets an 11 out of 10, like rave reviews, that people are going to start selling their PS5s. No, they're not going to start selling their PS5s. But will they start buying Xboxes? That's what it's about. You you don't got to get people to sell what they already have, but you can get them to invest in what you're selling by putting out quality products. That's what it's all about. But so, but you're not, so that, that's just a lie to me. That's just, that's just a lie that people are so stuck in their ecosystems that they won't go anywhere else and try anything else. I just don't vibe with that. I, I just don't believe that. I think that is, that is untrue. Parts of what he's saying have validity, but holistically, I just do not believe that is true. People, we, we have seen it. People have, it, it, and yes, he's right about, like he did say that, before generations were a clean slate, now people carry luggage with them, which, which is their digital library. That is true. But the this thing where people, oh, no, I just won't leave no matter what because of my digital library. No, I, I, I don't I don't believe that. I, I just don't believe that. Um, 
I think maybe hardcore gamers probably care about more more of their uh, digital library than than casuals. And there's a certain percentage of like hardcore that hardcore gamers make up of like cons of the console market, and that that part um, that that percentage is will is what will create that gap in market share of where you can of where you can get the hardcore to to and impress the hardcore enough to come over to your platform that gap of hardcore is what makes it, what makes a difference you know what i'm saying so i i just i just don't i just don't believe that um let me see what other quote he said yeah he he said we lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library. It's not a clean slate. Yep, said that, you know. Um, yeah, like, it, a lot of this just sounds like it's just loser mentality is what a lot of people are calling it, where he's conceded, he literally admitted, I mean, yeah, he said that they're in third place and he, th that they can't compete with Nintendo and, um, and, and, and PlayStation. And... He said that we're not in the business of of out consoling Sony and Nintendo. There isn't really a great solution or win for us. I know that it will upset a lot of people. It's just the truth of the matter that when you're in third place in the console market and the top two players are so strong and like what? And they have certain cases very discreet focus on doing deals and others. It makes it very hard for us as the Xbox team. And he said that's on them and not anybody else, bro. It just seems like, bro, we can't do anything, so we're just gonna we we can't do anything, so we're gonna stay in our little bubble and kind of live here and maybe like thrive here. And I think once again that does not help Xbox fans because that mentality does does not help create the products that they that they deserve or should or should get. Place, I think PlayStation has the mentality that not literally, not literally when I say this, but they want to dominate Xbox. They, they want to destroy Xbox, not literally, but perceptually, at least. They want to literally destroy them and dominate them. And that's and you kind of see that effort. You see the, 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 the results of that. But Xbox is kind of like complacent and like, yeah. We're okay just like, you know, being happy in our own little bubble, in our own little vacuum and, you know, kind of making the fans happy. And it's like, bro, this, that's, I don't, I just don't think that's the right mentality to have. I don't like that Phil, Phil Spencer is just, he, he just is content with being this good guy and he doesn't have any competitive, real competitive nature. Bro, bring back them dudes from the 360. I'm sorry. I, bring them back. Phil Harrison and, and and the and the rest of them dudes, yeah, it's man. No, nah, like you got to bring back the old the old the old regime because these guys th this mentality ain't right. This ain't this ain't doing it. So um, I think oh yeah he he did bring up um you know that he did say that there will be a clear message uh, as far as Starfield goes as far as the frame rate goes and he but he didn't say. They, they kind of softballed the question. They didn't ask him directly, is it going to be 60 or 30? But he said there will be a clear message as, as to what it would be. His demeanor made it, feel, made it seem to me like he was kind of confident that it's going to be uh, 60 because he didn't seem worried. But uh, who knows? Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Let me know what y'all think about this, um, this, this interview with Phil Spencer. Don't think... Uh, I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think it instilled a whole lot of confidence. This is, this is not what, this is not like the, the, just the, the you know, the aggressive and like pit bull mentality that you want a, uh, you, you know, the ones that is making products for you to have. It's just not. It, it's, it's kind of weak, bitch made. It's like, it's like, I, I hate that like everybody thinks that, that like, for example, all athletes have to sub subscribe to the Kobe mentality that you have to be like, just like literally the, the Mamba and like have this killer instinct all the time. I don't like that they, you know, hold all athletes to that. 
But I feel like, listen, and I feel like Phil Spencer is supposed to have that here, and he doesn't. It's just very laid back and and kind of soft and a little bitch made. I I don't like it. Um, and some like I said, sometimes he needs to stay quiet. Like it, it, I don't I don't know if it I don't know if it helps him. And every time he does like a like an interview, it's always them on their back heel. It's always an an interview to like on a def- something defensive or uh, or uh, reactive. You know what I'm saying? They're always on their back heel trying to trying to defend, go on a PR run to like defend something. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about this. Um, good old Phil Spencer. He's definitely on the hot seat a little bit. Let me know what y'all think. Follow me on Twitter. Hit the like button. Uh, hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I do a video. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.